Um, I have to start again. Well, that's better. That's okay. Um, my microphone was not on, so I'm starting again. Hi, everyone. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this live stream. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so who do we have here? Kylie. Hi, Kylie. Hi, cinematography. <laughs> Hi, all unicorn. Thank you so much for being here. And 13 pumpkin 31. Thank you so much. You always send me so nice um, messages on Tumblr. Uh, Lilac like Tabber. Thank you so much. And Anuxkax. You have so difficult name to say. Yes, Verbi. Verbi. Hi, Verbi. Thank you. Um, so. Um, as I explained while my microphone was off, uh, I said that uh, we made a poll to choose which item we were going to do today. And I put back the neon and the plants that I put uh, two weeks before. But I added uh, pillows and blankets and it was the one that was chosen by the poll. So I guess we all love pillows and blankets we never have enough pillows and blankets so I got rid of the green screen because it was um, not very precise a bit um, I don't know dirty because I'm streaming at night to be able to be streaming for the most people possible so I, I have ordered a, like a room divider here so it will be uh, nicer for you but also nicer for I don't know, my living room, because my boyfriend was kind of tired of have, having the big green screen in the middle of the living room, because before it was just for the tutorials, and then I started streaming, so it was like here forever and not very nice. So I will be arranging something nicer in the back. Hi, Moniame, thank you so much for coming here. Um, so let's start. So this will be the view. So we are not going to do exactly this one. This was just an example for um, for what I was aiming for. What I will basically basically teach you is how to use uh, Marvel Designer to make realistic fabric and mostly how to reduce the polygon of them because Marvelous Designer is nice, but the result is nice if you have like uh, thousands of polygons and this is not what we want for The Sims 4. So we are going to use Marvelous Designer to make the shapes of our uh, pillows and blankets. And then we are going to use Blender to um, make uh, low poly versions. And then we are going to use Substance Painter. And we are going to calculate the difference uh, between the normals of the high poly and the low poly so we can have very nice normal with a lot of folds in it. So it will look like very high-end pillows, but not without it. And I will also show you the fabric generator that is in a Substance um, Painter, which is super nice if you want to create your own pattern on, on your cushions. Um, hi, Adri Playland. Thank you so much for coming here. So I'm very excited. Um, and uh, as I promised, uh, I try to keep it short, not five hours like the elevator we read. And hi, CDN. And um, just got home from uh, picking up my cat from the vet. She had to have her jaw wired shut because it's broken. Oh, poor thing. I don't know what happened to your cat, the poor thing. So just for so you know, I'm streaming, I'm double streaming um, in YouTube and Twitch. So I have both chat on my uh, left screen. So I will be reading what you say. So in case you, you don't know, like you are uh, on one chat, on another chat, you can still uh, see or understand what the question are. So if I'm reading a question and you don't see it, it's probably because it's in on the other stream. Right, so. Uh, now to, uh, so, Sari Bimpkin ask is, uh, it will be a five hour stream tonight. Uh, it won't because, you know, I need some sleep. And no, this, this is very easy to do and it will be quite fast. So we will start with Marvelous Designer. Marvelous Designer is 
pretty easy to use but it can also be kind of confusing because it can be very I don't know messy it reacts a bit weirdly so we are going to do um, a very simple shape and also I will uh, explain to you um, the settings I'm using I'm not super comfortable with this uh, software I don't master it like I probably don't master it like uh, CAS um, creator does because I'm only using it when I'm um, doing some fabric so maybe I will say some stuff that are not true what what I'm using is what I've learned with tutorial online and anyway we'll see when we, we uh, be adding so cinematography says omg you have no idea that you choose the perfect timing of this stream for me i want to try to do tablecloths but i was aware because of the high poly yes yes exactly and uh, since you're talking about that um i think like um in this picture we have one set of pillows and and a blanket but what what i will do is i will set um I we will make some pillows on the floor and we will make a blanket on an existing um, armchair. So you can actually learn how to import an object uh, in Marvelous Designer, an object that already exists, like a sofa or a table in your case, and how to make the blanket fit uh, your object. Uh, I made rugs and I still don't know how I did it. Well, rugs are pretty easy, but yes. So. We are going to create here a rectangle and with shift, um, um, with shift, we can make a square. So this is the UV, this is like the 2D, the 2D space and this is the 3D space. Um, we are going to toggle this view which will show the wireframe on the surface so you can understand first the size of what you're creating and also the um, how do you say like the, the polygons of um, our mesh so by default uh, marvelous designer is using triangles which is very good for having a nice um, folds uh, but it will not be easy for us to reduce the polygon later so i advise to go in property editor and toggle the remesh and as you can see it will transform the trees in quad and later on we can remove those um, edge loops so it will be easier to um, lower the polygons so very should say same i have a ram bed for my sims and there is like not bedding for it so i'm trying to figure out how to do my own well after this tutorial you'll probably be able to do one i hope so Anyway, so uh, this will be um, the pillows and we are going to copy paste this one. So control C, control V, easy peasy. And I put it here because this is the um, right side and this is the wrong side. We are going to flip it. So right click and flip horizontally or you can do control G as you can see it uh, turns the the plane and then we're going to move it to make it in front of the other one then we are going to sew each edge so it's here uh, segment sewing or um, the keypad N like this and as you can see there will be uh, some same color lines indicating which um, edge you want to sew with which so this one and i want this one with this one please yes like this and this one and this one this one this one and this one and this one so if i hit space it will um start the closing simulation it's like this window now is pause and if I hit space yay so this is our pillow but for now there's 
no flap in it. Jet Scorpion sips he first hello, second can you move face cam to the left so that we can see the setting of fabric you using, of course. Ooh, how can I do that? Hmm. Uh, yeah, give me one second because I need to redo the mask. Background, because I made some mask. So. I'm going to do white and the little black it will be here no, smaller yes All right, so now I just need to edit my camera. Data note, un petit coucou au passage. Hello, je ne sais pas qui tu es, mais merci d'être passé. Um, well, 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 where, where, where it was, yes, filter, edit, oops, edit filters. There, should be fine now. Yes, there you go. Thank you so much. Oh, hi Jess. Uh, well, so back to our um, back to our shape. So uh, right now this is our pillows, but as you can see, um, there is no fluff in it. So we will have to add some pressure in it. Uh, so it can uh, fluff the dad. Hi, Jessica! Thank you so much for coming here. Uh, Jessica has a super nice um, Twitch uh, channel where she's building and playing and using mostly Alpha CC. So I went one day looking her channels and I really, really liked. Uh, the ambience it's like very positive vibe it's a very very nice channel atmosphere and the people in it are really nice too so i really recommend it and thank you so much the new set looks so good i can't wait to build thank you so much um i'm also very happy with the results uh, i've been uh, playing with the hospital lately with my with my own theme and now i want to start uh, a vet um, anyway, so back to our pillow. Uh, we are going to add some air inside. So we are going to chill. It's not fluff. We are going to add, but air. So here you have the pressure setting and I will put slightly. Don't put too much. You will see why. Like if I put too much, bye bye. <laughs> it's just flying away like a, whatever, uh, like an air balloon. So I'm going to control Z. So it can be back and I'm going to select it and just add just a little bit of pressure. So just two for now and we can already see that it's, it's fine. We love you, Sibubu. We love your energy too. Thank you so much, Jessica. <laughs> and yes, so um, apparently we have a family reunion because all those very nice people are all people I've met uh, in Jessica channel. So, so here we have we have our pillow. 
So if, because this pillow is on the floor, uh, we don't need that much pressure. But if we were, if we wanted like to make it standing against something, that maybe it won't be enough. So I could play with the pressure. So if I want, for example, to make it stand against a fake wall, I'm gonna add a rectangle like this. But if I just let it that way and I uh, start the closing simulation, he will just fall, you know? So it's not what we want. And we have to be careful with um, Marvelous Designer because it takes a lot of resources from your computer. Um, uh, <laughs> so yeah, the pillow went in the air and Sadipem can say, how do you connect the edges for sewing? So you have to use this tool here. It's, good. it's called segment sewing or you can use the end keypad. Um, <laughs> so it flies away, just leaves and leaves its best life never to be seen again and you have to start over. No, actually you don't have to start over. You can go look for him if you have time, but it's probably like in the, in the deep space of Marvelous Designer, infinite space. So probably Control Z is better to bring it back. Uh, there is also some settings where you can actually change the gravity. By default, the um, software uses the Earth gravity so you can put zero gravity so in case you know something like just like to avoid the pillow fly anyway only your accent is divine yes my accent is very french thank you sorry so, sorry or thank you depend on on how you actually consider um uh, the french accent uh, there's so much that goes into you to see my flown. Thank you. I've gone ahead and got rid of half of my BCC to make room for CBB stuff. Yes, I made a lot. Sorry about that. And the pillow looks comfy as fuck. Yes. Well, a, li it's a little bit. I like them not hard, but like not too soft. Anyway, so as I was saying, we need a wall, but we don't need like some this. This is not working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and freeze. So now when I will go in the um, uh, closing simulation by hitting start, this will not move. So I can use it like a wall to like simulate the fact that the um, pillows are actually standing upon it, or leaning upon it, for example. Like if I'm, I'm, I'm doing, okay. So, um, yes, Marvelous Designer is sometimes very weird to avoid what you just saw, which means, um, some, uh, fabrics clipping with each other, which is very nice. Hi, thank you so much for the follow or the subscribe or the follow. I don't know anything about Twitch. I have no idea what I'm doing anyway, um, to avoid this you can uh, select your fabric here and click on the fabric on the top right and you can uh, increase the thickness. That will be also, um, if for example, you made some fabric over a hanger because you're making clothes uh, and your fabric goes through the, the hanger, then you can change this. So the thickness put three millimeters and it will be uh, easier. Um, can I fly away too? Uh, well, you have to put a lot of pressure in yourself, uh, like I said, like a hair balloon, and maybe you can fly away, but I'm not sure it will be very enjoyable. Uh, I bet I was a, I bet that was a down feather <laughs> pillow. Yes, definitely. Uh, I will make a pillow for my new nursery set after this. Yes, please do. Especially in making clothes, I accidentally bring particle distance to and the after simulation crash my stuff to where, where, yes. So this is very, very demanding. And I do have a very uh, kind of a NASA-like uh, computer. So anyway, so as I said before, uh, if, the, uh, if the pillow was just on the floor, then the pressure was enough. But you can see here that it doesn't have enough pressure. So what you can do is add more pressure. But the more pressure you will add, the more um, air, the more compact the air will be. So it can also ruin the folds you want to do. So 
the solution to that is to change the um, settings of the fabric. So we will click here and we will change the physical property of the fabric. So by default, you have a list of fabric and it kind of gives you an indication of what you want. For example, if you do know some fabrics, like I'm sewing for real, so I kind of know all this, but if you don't know, you just, you can just go randomly. But for example, if you want something that have some, um, I don't know the word in English, but something that can uh, stand by itself, you can definitely go for the leather, leather, go hide. Thank you for the follow Chantal. Thank you so much for being here too. Uh, I'm enjoying this more than it should be, the shapes of the fellow as you grab it. Yes, me too. This is something very relaxing to actually place with the pillow. Anyway, so click on the fabric and you can uh, see that the uh, leather will definitely be uh, thicker. But if you choose something uh, more light, like for example, silk, like this, then you can see how the, the the air is filling it because it's very very uh, thin uh, fabric so the best is to actually play with um, all of them until you reach what you want but because for example if i uh, put back the leather because it's a heavy fabric then the air is not filling it enough so you have to put more hair so oops so select again both and don't forget to select both and not only one side and you can put more air but you can also see that even if we added more air it's, it still have more uh, it stands better so now we can put it where we want and we can also change um, how much polygon we have here and obviously the more polygon we have the more precise the folds will be so i'm gonna show you with more but then i will going to reduce it because then the animation won't be that as smooth and it will uh, make more time to take anything so i usually like to so this is the particle distance that you will have to change so if i put less particle distance the the quad will be smaller and we will have more details, but then the computer will also be smaller and the polygon will be much, much, much higher. So that means we will have to um, reduce it later and that will take time. So what have you been saying? Um, hi, 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 hi everyone. How do you select on the right side? I never can on the right side, I don't know. I think you, you're supposed to be on the right side. So if it's not the right side, you can always flip or you can always, I think there's something where you can invert the normal, like flip normal. So in case you don't have the right, the right one. Um, hi, Kosh Kasim. Thank you so much for being here too. Uh, so if I hit start, you can see that now the computer is much s slower, but you will also see that oh, my falls uh, look great. But I'm pretty sure that if I export this, it will be something like um, 15,000 polygon for just a pillow. Um, it's supposed to be 2,000, so that's too much. And we don't need that kind of detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back to 20 because I don't want to do too much high poly. Maybe I can lower it uh, just a little to have a little bit of more details, but I don't need that much. There. So it's quite difficult to handle the pillows in the air until you have something that you really want like as you can see like he, this is too this is too much but that looks good I think this one looks good I like I like this one what do you think we will make just one pillow that will be casually leaning on the wall something we can put like 
uh, on the sofa or we can put like just on the floor like something to make um, a little mess in the house so we are going to export it to Twekik um, in Blender because we don't need the, the, the wall anymore I'm just going to delete it first I'm going to save because uh, Marvelous Designer is um, very, very um, unstable, like sub Substance Painter. Below. And then I'm going to select um, my file and hit Export OBG Select Day. So Koshka says, try Elastic on Pillow just a little. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, I, I'm, I'm not very familiar with uh, Marvelous Designer. I'm discovering more and more uh, every day because I'm, I'm watching tutorials and I, I actually tried. So let's try Elastic a bit. Oh, I'm going to put back first my wall. Can I have my wall back? Thank you. So let's try Elastic. Nope, too much. Uh, let's say, what should be the, re the value? Maybe less strength, like this. Less, yes. So just a little bit like this, I guess. Like this, no, too much. Maybe by hand, like this. Is that what you were suggesting, Koshka? I think. That looks good. All right, thank you. Yes. So we are going to export this. If I select only the two um, uh, pieces planar, Catra uh, 96. Okay, let's try 96. I'm, I'm trusting you, Koshka. I hope you. Yeah. Well, I like it a little bit less. Maybe, maybe Nani. 90, better before I think I like it. yeah like this <laughs> so you can see that it's kind of endless and unsatisfying result of what you want so I just gonna stop and I will be do control Z to go back to where I was because I think I was more happy. Uh, my daughter said it would be really funny if he had an in-depth animal thing on it. Yes! Wow. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm able to do that. No. Okay. I'm going to go back, redo his control Y. I think I made too much, too much uh, messages, automatic messages. Yes, okay, th this one was my favorite. So we're going to keep this one. So I'm going to export uh, the OBG uh, selected. So I only export the, the pillow and not the, the wall that I made. Uh, my velocity designer looks like it would be fun to use, but I can't tell. I get frustrated with trying to adjust the position of it. It's very, very, very frustrating. I sometimes spent, I think, I don't know if you remember my shopping site where it has some uh, changing room uh, curtains. I spent hours to make the curtains look exactly how I wanted, especially since I had all the, the little pieces of uh, fabric that was uh, hanging the curtains and uh, hours because it was like, 
almost and then it was like clipping together and kind of destroying what I was doing and um, so yeah it's very frustrating and um, I don't know when I'm when I'm watching tutorials uh, people uh, seems to use it very very easily but I don't know why my for me it's it's kind of difficult so pillow MD so here I'm a really crap um, at uh, saying what were you supposed to toggle or not because I have tried many things things and sometimes I was not uh, happy with the settings so I think the only um, thing I can advise is the weld here because it will kind of attach uh, sides together so when we will reduce the, um, the polygon using the edge loop it will actually remove the edge loop from all around and you don't have to remove the bolts uh, to attach it and you can avoid holes between um, the sewing of your mesh um then um the scale is kind of i don't know i i, I never succeed as well to put it uh, exactly like sometimes it's the, it's the exact um scale of blender and sometimes it's not so um you could pin it to the world to keep it in place yes it's sometimes what i do but also sometimes you can actually uh, feel the pin so sometimes it doesn't really work i remember the shopping i recolored the cut from the set the curtains sound sound like they were frustrating but they know that they look great in the end thank you so much thank you so much i think it was worth it but it was a lot of time indeed so now i'm go i'm going to um blender and i'm going to uh, import obg and choosing my pillow so here's my pillow um, the scale is pretty nice because um, I think um, one, one square in blender is one tile in game so we are going to put here as if it was the wall and it's already on the floor um, Yes. So first, we are going to remove the auto smooth. I don't know uh, why it's always uh, on, but every time I import something from Marvelous Designer, it has the auto smooth. Second, we are going to do, um, I don't know how to call it, like kind of the uh, bumpy edge. Uh, if I look at my reference from, from the pillow, I like that this pillow, like the first on the floor, has this, um, uh, I don't know, this thingy, this uh, bumpy, bumpy edge all around. And we are going to recreate it. But because it will take a lot of polygons again, we will actually create it. And then we will create a low poly version and we are going to include it in the normal and not in real. So we will be back to this after. And before low, lowering the polygon, we will also smooth this because this has a lot of um, poly. We can see the polygons and this is not looking nice. So I'm going to go in sculpt mode in Blender and I'm going to choose the smooth uh, brush. And here I'm going to lower the strength to something around 0.2 one something and I'm just going to smooth everything so it doesn't look too much geometric Ju just to smooth it a little obviously I have kept the tin topo I, I didn't enable tin topo which means it will actually keep the number of polygons I have initially I don't create new one so obviously it won't be as precise as if I had some more uh, polygons uh, I believe it's called ribbing ah, well I'm learning a new word um, I'm not very good at learning the um, specific technical names of fabrics and uh, I don't know sometimes I create a set and sometimes I create a new item in it uh, I just don't know how to call it in English so I have to ask people like, why do you say this oh, that's
So I'm just smoothing it a little. Like this. And here, because it's diagonal, um, we there's not much we are going to be able to do. Uh, it will be worse when <laughs> we will be reducing polygons. So we'll see uh, to come back to it later. Maybe we can um, go back to it later uh, after. Let's try. I'm going to triangle. And is it better? Yeah, a little. So I'm going back later. No. There. You are doing very good learning English. Yes. Yes. Well, I think I know how to learn uh, how to speak English. It's, it's just I don't have enough vocabulary every time I want to say something. Also, I I, um, I don't have very good memory, so I always uh, learn some new vocabulary. Thank you, everyone, yeah, for the follow and and welcoming. Um. So I um I forgot everything. I have I have so many too many things in my head. Languages. And the fact that I have learned all the languages actually make me forget French. So I also forget all the time how to say very simple thing like a fork, for example. And you know what the pointy thing is? How do you call it? Oh yeah, a fork. A fourchette in French. Anyway, so it looks good it's smooth now we are going to select the outer line so we can create the ribbing so to do that i'm going to toggle uh, this option which is called um, keep uv and edit mesh selection in sync like this and what it does is when i will be selecting on the uv map it will select um, in my viewport so I'm will, I will select all around and because they are sharing uh, the same, the same um, edges, it's uh, selected on both. So I'm going to um, duplicate it. Oh, by the way, I forgot to put my little plugin here, screencast. So now when I'm hitting some uh, shortcuts, you can actually see what I'm hitting. So shift D and I'm duplicating um, my selection so control e i and i'm hiding it so i only have this and then i select this and i will hit e to extrude and s to make it bigger and then this i'm going to put it in a separate so i i have cat hair everywhere my cat is just behind me. And um, I'm going to use the modifier solidify. It's not really working, is it? Oh, maybe I'm not on the right. Sorry, I'm not on the right one. <laughs> pee pee. No, it's not pee pee. Pee, pee, pee is like peeing. No, it's Pee-wee. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't seem in the mood. So, uh, sorry, um, modifier, solidify, and it's very weird, so we won't do that. <laughs> sorry. So, um, I prefer maybe to um, extrude like this. And when, when it does that, meaning you can see that it's kind of messy, then you select everything and recalculate and, and it's still messy. Well, that's mean, uh, that means the, the mesh kind of twist, twisted, so we have to fix it by hand to make it better. So I'm going to, how can I do that? just going to remove this a 
spaces and then I'm going to relink them by using the loop to bridge. Yay! Hi Momotech, thank you so much for coming! How are you today? So I'm removing the one that causes problem and I'm just relinking relinking them by tuning bridge. No, nope, not working. So I'm selecting. Hmm. Ooh -hoo. Okay, so maybe the the shape we used was a bit too complicated to do what you do. Usually, I do that um, on a on a more more simplistic like like a pillow on the floor, so it's easier. So um, how to do that? My problem here is that. The mesh is um, kind of twisting, so it's difficult for the software to connect them. See? This is supposed to be on the bottom and this is on top, so I don't really know how to fix this. Okay, let's let's use this in another technique later. For now, we, we just we just focus on the pillow. Where's the pillow? Okay, um, I'm going to delete it and I'm going to. Oh, right, it's hidden. Ha, ah, yes. So Alt H to when it's hidden and you want to bring it back. So now we have the high poly model. Um, this is the um, UV map. Um, I don't. I don't recommend using the Control P. With we use sometimes to realign the UV map in the UV islands because, as you can see, there will be some misplaced um, polygon. So the best first, the best is actually to clean. So we can uh, go in mesh cleanup and delete loose to make sure we don't have any um, uh, we don't have any uh, vertex lost and we are going to do this manually so I'm, ju I'm just putting it back here uh, so this will be the high poly model so we are going to export it at obg and selection only and we untoggle right material and this will be called pillow high and now we are going to reduce it because as you can see it's 6700 polygons so that's too much we want to reduce it we can be very uh, comfortable with um two two thousand maximum because it's only one tile object um so we are going to reduce uh the polycount by selecting edge loops. So if you watch my tutorials or by how to reduce polycount, it's pretty easy. You have to hit Alt Shift and avoid selecting the actual um, seam line. So this one we can't remove and we will keep the angles like this. And then we are going to reduce First, these, as you can see, they are too close to each other, so we probably don't need them. So I'm just zooming on the UV island to make sure that I'm not removing the, um, the seam line of my item. And then I can hit delete edge loop. And as you can see, it got removed it without changing the shape or changing the UV map. So now I'm going to select one over two edge loop to just reduce. So one over two, this one, this one, to just reduce the number of uh, polygon we have in our mesh. And you be you see that when we will be um, calculating the normal map between the high poly model and the low poly model, we will catch back some faults that we will lost by reducing the polygons now. So usually I keep the edges because this is where we have the most, the most detail. 
So I'm just going to remove one of the two horizontally too. Like this. Hmm, I think I said no. This one is not coming with us because it's the edge. So delete edge loops. And here we have 100, uh, 1600. So that's much, much better. And as you can see, it still looks good. We kind of lost some faults in here, but we will bring them back with the normal map. So now I'm going to export this with OBG. Uh, selection only, right uh, untable right material, and I'm going to call it low. For later, I'm going to change the cut to zero so I can import it in um, Scenes for Studio. So now we are going to Substance Painter. So in Substance Painter, I'm going to click new, I'm going to hit uh, 2000 when I will be ready I probably bake, um, export it at 4000 but you will see that the um, uh, close simulator we are using is taking a lot of resources so it's better to have 2000 just for working and then we will export at 4000 and then reduce in Photoshop at 1000 so the file is not too heavy so I'm choosing the low version okay and then I'm going here at uh, here it's called texture set settings and I'm going to hit on back mesh map and here in the high definition meshes I'm going to select the high poly model we had and I will change the size to 4000 because this time I really want my maps to be calculated the maximum possible because I won't lose any detail that way so the more the bigger the size, the bigger the most the most time it will take, obviously. Okay, so now we can see that all the detail uh, from the um, the high poly model has be have been uh, baked into our model. I probably need to change a little bit of settings here because there is there is a, a, a weird stuff in here. So if you want to see the difference, let's see. Let's see. How can I show you that? I think I'm just going to remove. So this is with the high poly model and this is without. You can see that it kind of smoothened the, the um, mesh and also added some more faults that we were missing. See, so that's nice. Uh, I'm just going to recalculate to remove this uh, by reducing a little bit. I think it's that setting. Let's try it. Should be... I don't know. Let's try both. To see how it goes. No, it's worse. Okay, it was better before. Oh, let's try with two. It's time for drinking. Okay, that's that's a no. That's the same. Well, anyway, I can still fix it later. It's all right. So we are going to use the fabric generator. This is a very, very powerful tool. So um, I just need to create a fill layer. And then I'm going to hit right click generator and choose fabric generator. So what it does exactly? You will have a lot of settings with threads, pattern, age, adjustment, and output parameters. And all those settings are endless settings where you can customize everything about your pillows and your fabric. So here, 
we will be able to change the scale of the material so this is too much for example so we are going to do something more like no that's the opposite no that's too much maybe something like 30 40 and then we can also change the way uh, the weaves um, is so you have plain wheels or you have twill or you have the cord weave so you can change um, how it is braided I think so I think I like this one and you can also uh, change the pattern of the weave so each each uh, type of wheel will have different type or not depending and then you can also change uh, if you want some uh, some of the twill to be uh, different like if you want to different spaces for example you can change the scale of it like this it's it's pretty amazing it's kind of infinite possibility uh, you can flip the direction you can change the rotation Uh, you can convert to diamond. That kind of reminds me my grandmother pillows. And then you can change the color of the thread. So here you can change the diameter of the thread. And if you want it to be um, maybe one is like thicker than the other, for example. Uh, if you want uh, it to be um, like uh, unequal and give it a more uh, boho look maybe more hand handmade uh, look um, you can change twisted and twisted you can change the profile roundness if you want something that looks more flat for example with less um, less height and then you can change um, sorry I have to be careful with substance painter because it can also be um, unstable and it takes a lot of uh, resources and um, from your computer so we have to be careful yeah so here you can see that I, I almost completely removed the roundness of it so now we don't have um, uh, we have barely some um, relief textures on it so then I can change the color of it so I can uh, replace the white by beige I'm going to reduce the, um, the size of our of our texture so it doesn't take too much time because you are we are using a lot of time just waiting for the color to adjust so first I'm going to save my project thumbnail thumbnail uh, boop, 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 boop. here below and I'm going to put it in where was it here in 1000 and then I will bring it up because we can um, lose a lot of time and then I can change the um, the thread the thread the um, the color of the other thread uh, but for that I will need to uh, indicate that I actually want two uh, color for thread so for example I have unique colors for warp and weft true I can hit on false so then I can choose the colors of the second thread somewhere no I can't swap thread is it okay so depending on um, depending on um, on how you are actually choosing this sometimes you don't have any choice in it I'm going to use the plain weave because I also want to show you the patterns and it will work better uh, without any uh, pattern on it that already existing pattern on it so um, thread two
Where is it? I, I think I was supposed... I don't remember which... which... Well, there, there's so many... so many different um, settings. It's very... it's very confusing to actually get uh, what you want. So... Is it this one? Nope. I don't remember which was it. Is it that one? Well, anyway, we have to we, we have to look. Maybe I, I should um, rewatch the tutorial explaining everything because I don't I don't remember how to change the second colors. But I can also use a pattern, and this is the most interesting part of this tool. For example, uh, I can use some patterns. Uh, let's let's say I want oops, let's say I want uh, something for Halloween. So I can choose the color of how the pattern will be printed on my um, uh, pillow, and then I can actually. Uh, choose my pattern. So by default, you have a lot of different pattern. You have s stripes, you have square. I'm going to put a color so we can um, see better. You have checker, you have um, geometric, etc. But you can also have custom pattern input and that's the most interesting part. So now we have something where we can import our own uh, pattern. And for example, I can uh, import something from my library of textures. Damn. And let's say I want to use. Do you have something with a pepkin, maybe? Maybe. maybe, maybe. Okay, let's try to use that one. And the nice thing about it is that it actually looks like it is weaved. I think it's the word weaved. So you can create a pattern and then you can adjust um, how you want the pattern. So now the scale is one. So because the pattern I used is the seamless one, I can change it. So let's say I want it on this side and now it looks very realistic. It looks very as if the, the pattern was actually made uh, f uh, with this pattern while the original image is only black and white. And you can also create your own uh, with uh, lime and, and, and diamond and anything if you want like some Scandinavian pattern for example. So this works with pretty much any pictures you have uh, that, uh, that is um, seamless but it also works uh, with colors, image that have only one, for example, this cute cat. So let's try with this one. And maybe you want it as if it was printed on it and not really soon with it. So you can change the diet thread to screen printing. And now it will look like it actually was, um, you know, like, um, what would be the word? Let me look for the right word. Flocage, it's, um, well, printing, flocking, could be flocking. Um, so this, but I really like the diet thread one, especially if you can actually uh, change those but this is why I can't remember where I actually changed the second, the second, um, the second thread. So, family kicked me off. I'm back. I missed a bunch. So, welcome back, pumpkin. We are talking about um, the um, uh, fabric texture and substance painter. There is a fabric generator where you can use some thread um, settings to adjust exactly how you want and then you can uh, use your own pattern to make it like it was actually sewn and weaved uh, so you can make custom 
fabric it's kind of infinite so um maybe maybe the colors might be um something about this uniform space diameter distortion diameter roundness trick standard Well, that should be something. Okay, we need to look at for it later. For now, I'm just going back to uh, what I wanted before. Uh, meaning, I really liked the. Um, uh, where was it? I really like the. Okay, I'm lost. I'm I'm going to close everything so I can. Yes, that was the twill one. Yep, and. Then the thread. I think that was nice. I'm going to put back some roundness a little bit. I will also I don't want any variation. Pillow is looking so good. Yes, thank you. Um so the colours I'm going to uh put back uh well the, the beige is nice i'm just trying to remember how to to have two colors uh i'm um, um, remember i was able to change uh, and have two colors but i don't remember how oh here here it's here unique colors for wipe and left and then we can change the color here so now we, i can choose the um another color so we have a list of uh, colors but we can also use custom so we can actually choose which color we want but it doesn't have it doesn't seem to have a high impact on uh, what we are going to do hi greetings i love you <laughs> hi hi Tulitita. thank you so much uh, for coming here and uh, following me. Um, was it this maybe? Okay, so um, I'm not going to... Oh, maybe that's... Yes, exactly. So I forgot to remove the pattern, that's why. So now I can choose uh, the thread colors of both, both my fabrics. So I have one beige on the first one and I have a custom blue on the second one so I can actually make exactly how I want it to look. Love it, yes, love it too. So now we can add uh, the, the ribbing uh, we were talking about because there is uh, something we can use which is the UV border generator. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add an edge here and I'm going to add some volume so it will look like we have some ribbing. Teresita says I wanted to try creating CC2 but it's a lot of learning and I'm not that patient. <laughs> yes well it's not that difficult but you do need some patience to learn little by little. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to add some fabric in it. So the one I like to use the most is the cotton canvas that I downloaded from Self Substance. Um, for now, I'm going to hide this so I can adjust everything here. So I'm going to reduce the scale to three. Like this. And then I'm going to use a black mask and add, add a generator. And here I will choose UV border distance. Sorry to say it, cinematography say, it, but it's a little bit too late for me here. My eyes closing already. So good night. Uh, thank you so much for this stream. We finish it in the morning. That's 
that's understandable. So please uh, have a good night and uh, I will repost this um, tutorial on, on YouTube so you can still catch up tomorrow. Sleep well. Um, so the UV border distance is actually um, putting a mask around my UV map. So I'm going to rise the contrast, but not too, not too, too not too much and then reduce the balance so I have it smaller like this so now if I had it on top of it we can actually have this border like this so I'm going to change the color to have something more fit to our one so maybe something navy blue like this more, more green like this and then I'm going to add another fill layer where I will keep only the height and I will copy the, um, the mask by hitting Ctrl Alt C and pasting it on my fill layer. And now when I will be changing the height, you can see that it will change the height here. So to be able to see it more, I also need to remove this part from this one because we do have some texture uh, from this fabric, the, fa the fact that we have some uh, roundness here, so we are going to hide it. So I'm going to also paste the mask in here, but instead I will right click and hit invert mask. So now we don't see it here. Now we can see that if we remove uh, our border, we don't have any border from the, the first, um, the main fabric. So now when I'm, I will um, uh, put the height uh, on top, we can see it better. So it creates the illusion that we do have a ribbing while actually it's only drawn on the texture. So maybe it's the other side like this so it doesn't take any polycons but it does look nice kind of so that will be uh all for now um hi little dika thank you so much for coming by again you always here little dika is making the best item ever and definitely the the last one you made was um amazing the shader you found i don't know how you find it because i never saw uh, any object using that that shader so little dika made some windows like decor windows that actually have a fake 3d effect so it's it's incredible so you should definitely check it out camera is looking awesome yes thank you actually i got rid of the green screen um because uh, I'm, because i'm streaming more now uh, twice a week um, I want to set up something more uh, permanent and uh, my boyfriend was tired of the green screen in the living room so all right message received um, <laughs> so this is it for the pillows uh, we are going to export it just so we can show it uh, later in game so when I export it I uh, have to choose the path first obviously uh, that will be in uh, Streamlabs, Pillows, there. I will first export my normal map and my roughness map so we can do the um, normal map, obviously the bump map and the speculum map. All right. Oh, before I export, I need to put back uh, in 4000 so we have the best quality ever because Photoshop is better as resizing uh, texture than substance painter so it's always better to calculate your texture as the maximum size possible and then re-edit them in photoshop instead of doing the opposite because you will have much more details so i export in uh, 4k normal and roughness export and then i will change the setting to 2d view but before again 
Um, if I export to the 2D view, it will actually use the HDRY um, environment map uh, in uh, Substance Painter, which by default is the panorama. Panorama is nice to actually make your texture, but to export it is not nice because it has a directional light. So in game, if I uh, rotate my pillow, you can see that this side is very dark and while this side is very light. So I actually like now to use the studio one, which make a more um, regular lighting. But if you are doing some maxis max texture, I uh, recommend to use it uh, even uh, less contrast contrasted. And that would be that one. It's the one I have downloaded. So you might want to uh, um, rise up the um, exposure. So if you want this map, you can download it uh, in my texture baking video. I think in the video description, you have the link. So for me, I prefer to use that one and I will put back my exposure to 0 .0 0 0.5, please. Thank you. So now I'm exporting ink and I'm choosing to the view. And now I will create my item with Sims 4 Studio. So I'm always using the same. It's the one I created with uh, the Sim Workshop, no, the Sim Resource Workshop because I removed the drop shadow so I don't have to make a drop shadow ever again because I hate drop shadows. So I'm, ju I'm just cloning the same item all the time. Um, Streamlabs, um, that will be Sib live stream, live stream below. So meanwhile, it's calculating, we are going to resize and create our maps. So I have those three maps. So first, that will be the normal map. If you are used to normal map, you can see that this is a bit too much. And if I put exactly this map in game, it will create a very, very sharp and um, reflective item. So we are going to lower it up. For that, I choose the rectangle item and change the opacity to 50%. And in my color, I will choose the 128, 128, 225. So that will be the neutral purple of the normal map. And I will, sorry, and I will covering it until I reach a reasonable, a reasonable, reasonable amount of details. Maybe that is a bit too much, I think. That must be subtle like this. It's better. So then you take the red channel in the alpha channel, the green channel in both channels and um, resize it in 124. And then you save it in DDS. This is something I do a lot. And if you want more details about how to do normal maps because you're a bit lost with it, you can always watch my uh, video tutorial about normal maps. Uh, so this is the diffuse texture so i'm just hitting my shortcut that i made specifically and this is the roughness so i'm just going to use a dark blue like this i first need to switch it to rvb and um, filling my layer and put it in multiply reasonable is an unreasonably long word in english is mean yes reasonable reason it's also i don't i don't really know how to actually pronounce it because the way english people pronounce the o is not the same that in french so, and and sometimes it is and sometimes it's not so i'm, I'm always very confused but people say they like my accent so i guess it's okay um so here and then i resize it in 1000 uh, oops, and export it in dds right um so i'm going to edit this live stream below and that will be a chip below 
and then I'm going to import my model. Yay! And because it doesn't have any uh, drop shadow, it only has only one cut, so I can use the same for the shadow load. And I'm going to do the medium loom later because you probably already see the process and it's probably not the reason you are here. If you want to know about how to reduce the polycon, you can watch my uh, tutorial about how to reduce polycon. Or you can watch the beginning of the tutorial where we actually uh, removed uh, some edge loops. So this is the best way to actually uh, reduce the polycon. Your accent is calming to listen to. Oh, thank you. Maybe uh, I should record it myself to make some sleeping song. To uh, sleep better. Uh, the only thing I need to change to is um, the object catalog because the object I cloned was supposed to be put on any surface and I want this pillow to be put on the floor only. So I will put the zero in the slot deco size and I will change the normal map by the one we just edited like this. Whatever light and everything is fine just need to replace my texture and it will look very nice so we will do obviously more swatches later but then here we have a pillow it's very easy <laughs> sleeping to see yeah hi Leah Lec welcome in in our chat so this is the pillow it looks nice it's very low poly very very low poly um, so now I'm going to show you how to do a blanket and it's, uh, there will be some process we will go faster because it will it be, uh, it will be uh, very similar to what we uh, did before. So first I need to find uh, a surface where I will actually put my, pil uh, my blanket into. So let's, let's take the armchair we took from the uh, live stream what was the date it was on, on July so last July we made this chair uh, where is it where is it I didn't put it in the same space it should be around here maybe share fix stream like lamp nope I don't even know where I recorded it where I saved it live stream dining table was it after no it was before no that was the first one live stream chair yes that was the chair so we are going to use this chair as a um, layout a gabari i don't know how to say we are going to make the blanket to fit this chair so again it will look like um well it will fit perfectly so I'm going to export it at OBG. I actually have already one probably for the texture, but just in case I'm going to recreate it. Selection only and right material. And then I'm going back to um, Marvelous Designer. I'm going to save and I'm going to create a new file. And in this new file, I'm going to open ad as an avatar our chair so I need to find it back I think it is around here it's chair so here we're supposed to change the setting but I never know which setting to choose so I usually use the auto scale and and hopefully it won't be uh, it won't it will be the uh, right size but this is not the right size this is way too big so let's try again um okay i don't want the to scale let's see okay this is this is super 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 tiny so this is also not what i want so see this is pretty annoying because um i never know how how to actually put the setting uh, to fit exactly what i want so i guess i just put auto scale and then i will resize it and blender hopefully Let's see. 
So I'm going to recreate to create like we did before for the pillow a rectangle, but does they will be the size of my blanket. So let's say like this. So as you can see, this is where to can't, can I resize this? No, I can't. So we will have to change this because that will be uh, way too big. So sorry again, I will import um, an avatar. I will change uh, auto scale and I will probably uh, try something like this, 10,000. 10, Mm, more open avatar chain empty and maybe a hundred thousand yes most more like it so now i can reduce this and make it more more normal size like this so as before i'm going to remesh it so it will have quad so if we uh, put the wireframe we can actually see um, the quad we created and then i'm going to use the fabric simulation to create the magic and you will see before your eyes how this software is amazing for fabric are you ready let's go so for now it's not really convincing but now we can tweak it a little bit and we can actually put some volume so as i said before on the first part of this tutorial if you have some clipping issue between your avatar and your fabric you probably need to change the thickness of the fabric here so that will be three millimeters and it will avoid having the mesh going through like this. So that's very easy. Now you just have to hang around. But my advice is to avoid at all costs having um, the wrong side visible because to save some polygon, we are going to make this um, blanket one size only. So everything that will be back will actually be seen on the other side and it can be very dark. Like the, the, the way the shader is used in uh, the seams is kind of the same as here in, in Marvelous Designer. So what I usually do is I uh, tweaking the fabric so we don't actually see, come on, we don't actually see the wrong side ever like this, for example. And same as before, uh, if you think that this is too thick and you want um, your fabric to be uh, more smooth and more thin, you can always change it to something that will fit better. For example, if I choose this, you can see that the fold looks better. I can also see that the less polygons I have, the, the less details I have. So I can also re, um, reduce the particle distance so I can have more details. But you have to remember that after that, you will have to make the difference between the high and normal. This is too light. This is, this is flight. We will have a pillow accident again, meaning <laughs> the blanket will be flying all over because it's too light, so I'm going to change to something else. So maybe something like some poking. Yes, exactly. Whee! Be quiet. Okay, so that looks that looks better. So something I also like to use for blankets only is to actually go inside the physical property, the detail and put some density because it will make the um, fabric heavy and, and kind of fall on itself better. So if I remove, so you can see better, then we have some very nice fold like this. 
and we don't have we don't need to have over complicated shape J just something very casually around is enough that is enough for me so i'm happy with it i select my blanket and hit um actually i can also i didn't do it for um the pillows but you can actually um prepare the uv map better here in, in, in marvelous designer before exporting to blender is by going here ex instead of having simulation you have uv editor and then you have right click fill uv to modi unified so it will actually fit uh the uv um, where so when you uh, import it in blender you don't have to remove it manually that's something i always forgot to do so now i select my um, blanket and hit uh, export obj selected and this and here i will put blanket md all right so here you don't need to change anything because we don't even do any sewing at all it's just just a plane so okay and now i'm going to import it in my actual chair so i can resize it to the right scale because we prob probably did something very crappy in terms of scaling so i'm going to import obg uh, and i'm going to choose my blanket md okay i'm not that crappy anymore. Uh, actually it's it's almost exact fit so i'm really 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 good okay that was a complete blind guess but it was a right guess so as before i removed the other smooth and i will need to fix this manually so that's very easy to do so just go in edit mode and i will select the proportional editing and choose connected and then I will take the line like this and I just put back so it doesn't go through my mesh. So the proportional editing, make sure you move everything together and not only the edge you selected. So now you pretty sure that everything is in space. Place. Then I can go in sculpt mode and I can um, appease this kind of very um, diagonally. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, I'm, I'm now I'm um, I'm inventing some new words. Uh, it's kind of spiral, spirally, spiral. I also don't know how to say this. Um, I don't. I, I'm not using the right mesh, the right brush. Sorry back that was not the right brush I need to use the smooth and reduce the strength and maybe like this yes that's better okay, that's a bit too big So don't worry about those dark spots because you won't be able to see them in game. It's kind of how the, the material works in Blender. I just want to ease the, the diagonally aspect. I don't know if this word exists, but it does sound right. I will have to fix this again. You can see that um, the, the chair is going through the blanket again. So here it looks much better now. Right. It's 
So let's go and texture this now. So I just go back in edit mode to fix this little issue here. All right. Okay. So this is okay for our high poly model, but as you can see, our blanket is doing 17,000, which is way too much. So we are going to reduce this. So first I'm going to export my high poly model. So using export OBG selection only, and I unto the right material, and that will be my blanket high. And now we are going to reduce it. Um, same, we, uh, we aim 2000. So I'm doing it little by little because the fact that we have some folds overlapping each other, we might have some issue if we remove certain um, edge loop, uh, it will actually create some uh, see-through, what well, you will see. So because this is complicated to select, because there are some edge loops that, I, that are in, hidden inside my mesh, I'm going to use the UV map. So to do that, I'm going to use this function here that is called keep UV and AD mesh selection in sync. So I can see my UV map and whatever I select on here will be selected on here. So I can just, let's size this little. So I can select one over two in here. And yes, we added a lot of polygons, so that might take a little bit of time. Edge loop and this one too. I forgot this one as well. So we are now at 8,000, much better. And we are going to do the same on the, the, the height, I guess. And that will, make, that will take even more time because it's more long. So maybe that can also be used so something like to help you sleep because I feel like counting ships. <laughs> Almost there, I guess, hope so. Yeah, not that much. Anyway. Almost there, almost there. Yes. Delete. So we have 4,000 now, much better. So you can see, oh, actually that's fine. Well, we are pretty lucky. We, we do have to fix this, but just a little because we don't want to put too much difference uh, compared to our high poly model. So we have to fix this, but very carefully and very slightly. But for now, we still have too much, um, too much polygon again. So now we are going to choose where we are going to remove, remove them uh, by uh, spotting the space where they are definitely not needed. For example, this part is very straight. So we don't need that much details over here, for example. And we are going to fix this later as well. So now no, we have a 300. So maybe I can remove as well when it's straight here and at the end as well on the back. One over two seems nice because we don't have any folds here. So we don't really notice if we, if we removed some 2800, good. Like this, maybe this is too much. This one is very quiet as well. Oh, not that much. Okay, we need it. Maybe this one. Yes, not bad. And okay, this one I'm feeling. Yes. So we are now at 225. 
no, 2,500, sorry, I'm also very bad with numbers, as it seems. All right. So as you can see, I'm keeping all where there are some actual line, but I can remove where nothing is happening. Like here, okay, this was something I've been in here. Maybe like this. And maybe here is um, hmm, this one and this one. 2000. Okay, one last one. Just, just, oops. Just to be sure to be under 2000. Yes. So now we have to fix the little um, mesh going through because we move some stuff. So I'm going to choose the point and uh, by keeping the um, um, proportional editing, I'm just going to squeeze it a little bit to get rid of this. So like this. And this one, I have to make it disappear. And here we see a little bit of the chair. There. Here we see as well. and I maybe here just a little like this so now we are pretty sure that nothing is coming through maybe here something is coming through here what is it that we're seeing here Right, so that will be our low poly uh, model. So we are going to export this at OBG and that will be the blanket low. Like, um, now we are going to go um, here and import it. So new 2000, I'm selecting the blanket did I, did I save it? What was the name? Export OBG. Oh, that was the wrong, the wrong file. Sorry. Blanket low. Wrong folder. Uh, so Substance Painter, I'm uh, opening the blanket low. And OK. And then I'm going to uh, bake my mesh maps here and I'm going to Define the blanket high where I didn't save. It's probably in the wrong folder again. Blanket high. I'm going to move it to my right folder. Blanket high. And output size will be 4000 to be sure I have the most. Um, detailed possible it's also um, uh, I will have to see that because the mesh is very close to each other uh, I will use I think it's the use cage I ne and, um, I'm, I'm never really sure which option is because I want to avoid the normal map uh, calculating um, how to explain it Calculi calculating itself kind of let's see how the result is okay i'm going to untoggle it to show you first and then you understand and then i'm going to redo it with the option toggles so what i was talking about is as you can see here on the normal map we have some weird stuff happening because the normal map is actually calculating itself inside itself and that's not pretty but pretty so i'm going to try with this i think I think it's this. I'm not. I'm not sure. I hope it's this, or maybe that will be this. Okay, let's try. Mm. 
Hmm. I guess something is wrong. Okay, maybe it's not the use cage. Maybe, I don't know, little decay if you're still here, maybe you know about. I think maybe that could be this. Well, that's better. Let's try to improve it a little bit. All right, so you kind of have to play with the settings to avoid the the mesh to bake each other so here we can see that it's a bit too much um, the normal that it has baked so maybe we can also change how this is uh, integrated in our in our um, in our normal map baking so then we will add um, our fabric so we are going to try again and make a uh, generate um, using the um, fabric generator from Substance Painter but because it's already late and I, I don't want to you, you guys uh, getting tired of it I will just use a preset so let's try something from there Ooh, that looks nice so that looks nice I will just uh, edit it to where was it um, lower a little bit the the roundness I think yes because the roundness is always looking um, a little bit too much when we're doing this on, on substance painter I could watch all night <laughs> yes wow well. Uh, on Tuesday, I usually have more time and I can spend more time just playing around. Um, I'm also gonna, going to add a border because I always think the border looks uh, nicer. Uh, so I'm going to use this uh, cotton canvas again and use something maybe black. And I'm going to change. So first, I don't want any color variation at all and probably three yes so here i'm going to add a black mask and then a generator and then the uv border distance so if you missed the beginning of this tutorial i'm uh, going over this uh, in my pillow when i'm doing the pillow so if you just joined and you are trying to understand what I'm doing, you can just re-watch uh, the video when it will be uploaded on YouTube because I'm explaining that I'm actually using the UV border lines as a mask for my um, mesh. So I'm raising the contrast like this and reducing the balance like this. And I'm not using it this time because I don't want to confuse you guys, but one thing I can do to actually save some space because there is a bad thing about this UV map is like half of it is unused and um, in the sims we can only use uh, 124 per 124 texture or you can use uh, 124 to 500 no 1000 to 500 sorry so what I could have done is take this um, UV map and multiply it, it by two by doing SX2. So then it takes, actually, let me do it to show you. So XX, SX2. So I have resized it by two on, the, uh, on my width. Then I'm going to export it, OBG. Hi, Mitrishik, we're coming. 
uh, we are almost done so you can have me the beginning but you will be able to actually see the result so I'm re-exporting my blanket low like this I'm going to go in edit project configuration and replace my um, my project by blanket low like this so because we changed the UV map now what we calculated before does not doesn't fit anymore so I have to rebake this and I will have to change the scale of my pattern so it doesn't look squished Sque squeezed squeezed so let's go in my um, fabric generator in my pattern and here um, huh, I can't do that nope I can't so apparently um, with the perfect pattern generator we can't really change the scale Mm. Okay, so that was a bad idea because usually when you when we are using a pattern from here, so we, we are not using the pattern generator. I'm going to use my own Japanese wave pattern. Oh. Mm. Usually when we you when we are using a pattern here, we can uh, change the scale from X and the change on Y separately. So we are able to actually resize it. So I'm going to just going back because, well, it was not what I wanted. So I'm sorry about this. Um, it's usually better to do this. Hey Sip, the fabric texture is beautiful. Thank you so much, King Basie Sims. Um, blanket low. So I'm, I'm just, for this tutorial, I would just keep my texture as it is, but just for you know, you can always do that. Uh, meaning, um, size your texture by two on, on the UV island. So you can actually have something more precise and actually uh, use all the space on the UV map. So I'm going to rebake it again. Like this. And I will put back my texture. Okay, so that looks nice. So back to our border, our ribbing. Um, I'm going to put this a little less black and I will add um, actually I'm just going to remove a little bit more of hate that's a bit too much yes and look who's coming hello Kiwi Kiwi is coming you want to come here? Hi! So I don't think she knew that she was on camera. So now she might be not very happy to be on camera because she's very shy. You can see her. Oh, just <laughs> all right. Um, so I'm going to add some um, some volume here. So um, I'm going to add a fill layer and remove everything except the height. And then I'm going to copy my mask by hitting Control Alt C. So same, 
what I'm doing here, I already did with the, the pillow. So if you are interested into having more details about it, I'm just going over it at the beginning of this tutorial. Uh, and I'm going also to remove it from here. So I'm copy pasting my mask and inverting my mask. And that's pretty much it, I think. So here we have our super fabric. So same as before, I'm going to change my environment map to something more neutral because I want to keep something less contrasted. And I'm going to export everything. So first I need to export my normal map and roughness. Yes, and choose my path. Nope. Sorry. Here, I will also have to rename it because I already called my pillow like this. So that will be blanket like this and export this. Then I'm going to choose 2D view like this. So now so this is okay to create my item because I want my uh, blanket to be um, double sided. I will need to duplicate an item that has um, a double side. So uh, same as before, I already made my own. So I'm always using the same. Um, but to do it, uh, you can go to the shader. I'm going to show you how to make a normal um, mesh double-sided. So um, I used um, the Simos Workshop to actually create an item that has only one mesh cut without any drop shadow because I don't like drop shadows. So I'm going to replace it by... So I first obviously need to remove my chair and remove the chair here. I need to put the mesh cut at zero and then I'm going to save it because I didn't save it. Hi my spatender, thank you for the follow and welcome in. What is your kitty's name? She's named Peewee. P-I-W-I. So here I'm doing the blanket. I'm going to import my blanket. I have to adjust the footprint so it fits um, it fits my mesh. I'm going to put it on all my loads. Uh, obviously, uh, you are supposed to make all the loads, but I won't do it on this tutorial because it will take too much time. If you want to know how to reduce polycount, you can just watch my uh, tutorial about how to reduce polycount. And um, also at the beginning of this tutorial, I'm, I'm showing how I'm doing it and also with the blankets. So it's exactly the same process. So I'm going to replace the textures now. I just need to edit them first. So I kind of um, created too much. So I need the 2D view, the normal and the roughness. So as before, the roughness is a bit too much. So I'm going to um, calm it down by putting some uh, rectangle at 50% opacity with this color, which is 128, 128 to 155, which is the neutral normal color. And I'm just going to over it until it's more subtle then i copy the red channel into my alpha channel and then the green channel into my red and blue and save it and and resize it first and save it as dds all right 
then I'm resizing the blanket and the roughness mat I inverted first and then go into FEB mode and then put a dark blue because I want it kind of matte and multiply it and merging it and creating my alpha layer oops sorry my alpha layer no i didn't match before and then i can yes paste it i'm going to put it quite light here because this is where the gold is so actually i'm going to put the same on my green channel because this is what make it shine this could should be shiny i'm going to resize it to 124 and save it all right all right now i'm repeating everything the blanket yay looks exactly how we want it and the normal map and the roughness map so now how to make a double-sided fabric so you have to go into the shader the shader will be in the first model load and the second model load and the third model load because we have three lo loads so LOD means level of details and you will have to edit it in each separated shader. So click on the first model load, hit data, and then edit items. Here you will have a list. You have to choose material resources. It's the fourth button starting on top. So one, two, three, four, edit item. Here you have the list of all the swatches. So it's better to do this before you actually create all the swatches or you will have to do it for every and each swatches. So you need to edit the, the set one. So the default hit edit item. And here you will have a line which says double sided. Zero is there will be invisible one it will be double sided. So this is very important for any fabric you will do. And you also have to do it for bunt. So double sided one. Then you have to do it on the second one, the checker one, because it will be the LOD two. And then you will have to do for the third one. The third one is not a model LOD. It is actually inside the model. So when you click on model loads, you have edit item and you have the low LOD and then you can click and search for the shader. So this is how you edit shaders. So I'm going to rename it and we are going to test it before the end of this stream. So that will be blankets and that's also a cheap blanket. So I think that's it. All right save um, so here I'm going to paste this in my mods folder and launching the game Pee -wee. is super shy Clawing from any object make double sided. Yes, you can. In theory, you can. So, um, the toilet I'm using, I don't know why it has a counter. I think it was something I did before, but if you have an item with Fong, fong shader, which is the basic shader, basically, I can even take the, the first item I used to make the pillow and then I can edit the shader and make it double sided. 
and um, yes, it does save a lot of polygons. This is also what we do for plants, for example, if we want the plants to be uh, seen by both both sides. If you have any question, you, you can you can go for it because my Sims is very slow today to launch. I think it's because when I have all the, I think my value designer and I, I should probably um, close all this because it takes too much um, on my blanket. Blanket. I need to close all this. It takes too much. You always teach me something new every time. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm glad I could teach you something new. So I'm going to take my uh, testing family. Okay, I'm going to close this. veterinary set and I was testing it, testing it with my little cat here um, so first we are going to look for the armchair we did last time so that was the chair we did from the uh, stream in July and this is the pillow we made so you can see that it has a very nice reflect. It looks it looks very high poly way. It's not because we are cheaters. Yeah. And the blanket that fits perfectly. Our oh, armchair. So it looks super nice. What do you think, people? So the nice thing is, um, so I'm going to take a picture. Oh, I'm going to do the opposite, which means I'm going to move this over there so I can take my picture from my Tumblr. This is what it did today. So if I was very perfectionist, I would probably fix this. We can see that there is a little bit of see-through, probably some uh, mesh going through here. So there is this um, black spot that ca I can probably fix. But then everything else is very nice, I think. Et voilà! There. So now we can do some more swatches um, for those blankets. Uh, I will do that tomorrow because it's already late uh, in my house. It's uh, 1 a.m. So tomorrow I will do more swatches. I will uh, fix this. I will also add uh, all the LODs uh, so it actually fits the specs of the game. And I will put this uh, in the, the link for download so you can have it, everyone. Uh, everyone can download it. I will put it on my Tumblr, Discord and everything. I will also, I don't know. Um, yes. So, um, while I'm here, I'm actually going to show you my last set that I just released. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I'm going to do some um, um, promo, 
uh, for what I do. Okay. So I have a Patreon here. I prepare some lit. But it doesn't. Uh, yes, it does work. Uh, I have a Patreon where you can have early um, early access to everything I've released. Usually, I do one set every week, except when it's a big or difficult one. Then it would be more like ten days. Um, and you can also support me if you like what I want, if you like my videos, and if you like um, my streams. I also have a Discord channel if you want to create yourself some stuff and you have some question or sometimes you are stuck with something the discord channels we have a special um uh, server where you can ask questions and there's always someone that uh, can try to answer to you um and then i have my youtube um do i do i make you for my youtube yes i did the YouTube channel is nice because I'm also posting some tutorials and I'm um, reposting everything, every streams I make. So you can rewatch them if you want to go back to something we have seen and you did not understand or you just want to rewatch it. So this is my clinic, my veterinary clinic. I will put this build uh, as a download when it will be finished and um, it is not finished yet because I want to create a new set about kennels. So for now the kennels is empty but I will add something for the kennels. So this is my uh, actual uh, build So I'm, I'm currently playing, it, playing in it. So you have the reception area. So this is a cat tree, completely functional. So the cat can jump from surface to surface. And this is the checking podium where people can check in the animals, you can see. And we also have the vending machine, which is um, completely functional as well, meaning that the more treats you put inside, the more medicine you will have uh, on, on front. I also made some dry cat food bag and some um, treat jar and some medicine here. This was from a previous set. I think it's the fluffy set when you can have some toys for, for your, and this is a, a toys box. So you can actually tidy your room and putting the cat. Uh, yes, holy cat tree. Yes, it's a very big cat tree. It's actually a picture I saw from a, uh, a pet, pet clinic in Scandinavia, I think, and I, I really think it was beautiful. So um, I also made those stickers, and you have some stickers on the floor or stickers on the wall. And by the way, if you like, uh, I think, was it? If you like uh, Maxi Smudge and you want to have um, Maxi Smudge signs. I also made the um, sign in Maxi Smash in, in Simish. Yay! So you can also use it if you prefer Simish. Um, same with the dry food here. Um, you, you have the sweatshirts with everything written in Simish if you prefer Simish, if you don't like English. So here I made the, it's the, the desk of my, of my characters. And then here you have the surgery machine, which is functional as well and fully animated. Although I couldn't fix the old lights coming through when it's used because it's art coded in the tuning, so I can't really change it. It's very annoying anyway. This is what we did uh, during last last um, Tuesday streams. We actually made this examination table, which is now completely functional and works without any problem at all. We don't have anything through like we had some problem during the streams. I fixed all of it and I made some counters and cabinet where we can put some stuff in the cabinet. And I also find something that Ravishing told me 
which is I can make the glass unpickable. So now when we put something inside, we can actually take it back without having to take back all, the whole cabinet. That's super nice. That's really easy. And I added also some um, anatomy bolts. And I think that's it for this set. So for the next set, maybe not the next one, because maybe I want to do, I don't know. Maybe for the, maybe that will be the next one. I will do something for the canals. Oh, and that's the dog bath. So that we that's a bath for dogs and only for dogs. And it's nothing else. Um, adults can't use it or, or children. So I will do some um, fence for the canals with gates. And uh, I will also redo all the obstacles, you know, for the dressing, the, uh, the training of the dog. So that will be my upcoming set. So that will be all for my today's stream. Thank you so much everyone for coming in. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned some new stuff. If you have any question, you can always ask them in my Discord or on my YouTube channel under the comment description. Um, and I will do uh, my other stream on Tuesday on Twitch. So on Twitch, I'm Sibubu because Sibulet was already taken, like I'm uh, the same resource. So next uh, next Friday, uh, no, next Tuesday, sorry, I will be working on my um, actual set. So that might be the canals, which means we will probably do some fences. Um, fences are very interesting to do. I already made a written tutorial, but that, we, that could be nice to actually see it in um, action because it's quite difficult to do the fences. Um, and I think that's it. So thank you so much for your patience. Have a good night or a good day, depending on where you are. And see you another time. Bye.